we'll start again. Okay, so second concept. The extension of that, and again, this is another core jujitsu thing, is I need to control his limbs, specifically his arms, right? Because if, um, if Michael is going to pass my guard, how is he going to do it? What does he need to really do it? He needs his arms. If he manages to open my guard and he goes, I'm going to leg lock you, what does he need to do to leg lock? You have to do it. From this point of view, he, ha he has to watch my arms because I'm looking to sweep, to choke, to take his back. What do I need to do? I have to use my arms. That's, I mean, that's what we use. That's sort of like we're creatures of using our arms. That's everything. So I, again, I need to pay attention to that in jujitsu to stop him from doing the stuff he needs to do. So it's very core jujitsu. That's even more important in a self-defense situation, right? If he's, he, you know, we're in a road rage thing. He thinks I bumped into his car or cut him off. Oh, I saw you do it. <laughs> and he's taking me down, and now I'm trying to get to guard to defend myself, and I do this, and he goes, I'm going to knock you out. Mm -hmm. And that happens. Is this a good place to be? No, because he gets to load up and use gravity. What I need to be doing is what? It doesn't, uh, that's not a magic tool. It doesn't mean I can keep him from doing anything, but it's going to be harder for him to load up that big elbow and drop it on me because at least I have that. Right? If I worry about the potential for him having a weapon of any kind, gun, knife, screwdriver, whatever, how is he going to bring it into play? He's not going to reach in with his teeth, right? <laughs> He's going to do with his hands. So if I have to worry, or I saw, or as I wrapped my legs around him, I felt, felt it, yeah. I felt something around his waist. Oh, because here's the thing. Where do you, anybody know where bad guys carry their weapons? Around their waist. Around their waist. Ask any cop. They'll tell you. Every time they arrest someone, it's always around them. It might be stuck down their pants. It might not be anything fancy, but it's around their waist. So I go to do this, and I feel that bulge on his hip, mm -hmm. and unless he's really well endowed it's probably a weapon so I, have to, I better worry about that instead of instead of going oh man he's got a gun and he's bringing it into play okay so I have to focus on that idea controlling his arms and again do we need to do that all the time just rolling just training every time we step on the jiu-jitsu mats do we need to do that it's a good habit it's a good habit it's a really good habit Okay, and again, the failure, the consequences of failure is, well, damn, he passed my guard. He got me, I tapped, he got me in a leg lock that I shouldn't let him get, or whatever. It sucks. But you go, huh, oh, I'll get it back the next round. I'll get it back the next training session. Even, in, again, even in a tournament. Yeah, you know, you drive home from Vegas going, eh, I shouldn't have done that. But... You always have another tournament. To, you know, oh, next year at Pam's. I'll get it back, right? We might not have that luxury in a self-defense situation. So again, yes, if you want to, if you get lazy, right? If you do, if you're here, pull guard and do that in training, and he passed your guard. Well, that's cool. I'm not going to. I'm not going to necessarily go. Don't ever do that. But again, make that mental switch in your head, saying, "Yeah, I know this isn't the best, but you know, man, I just don't have much left in the tank. So t for now, for this round or the rest of class, I'm going to be a little bit lazier than I should be. But I know when I, when I should spend most of my time training with intent. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so we've got that idea. Minimize his control, maximize yours. Part of the, one of the fundamental ways we do that is to control his limbs. Okay?